began on a production line of glitter and promise. Even these matchbox replicas of their expensive big brothers start life like that at a Hackney factory. But let's go back to the drawing board stage. They might finish up as two-inch models, but there's no lack of detail when the designer sets about his task. Collectors, as well as children, buy these toys, so he has to make sure that all the trimmings have that authentic touch before the prototypes can be carved out of wood. They're five times too big at this stage, because that makes it easier to see if some small but important feature has been overlooked. A mould is made, and then it's time to scale it down to that familiar matchbox size. It's done with a pantograph, employing all the patience and precision of a surgeon at the operating table. The ladles of molten metal take us nearer to that production line. Just a few casts at first, but they build up until 80 million a year are rolling along. It's a far cry from the days when the first one, a replica of the coronation coach, sold a sensational million in 1952. Two coats of paint and a double journey through the ovens, and there are only the accessories to be fitted. In this case, plastic wheels and seats. And that's a sort of motor mechanics job without the normal dirt and grease to worry about. This is another branch of the motor industry which attracts around a million pounds from foreign customers each year. Unusual maybe, but surely not as unusual as an Acton saw.